Hey Nachachos, how are you doing? So let's do something different today. If you're playing Planet Coaster and you're wondering how to make your park more realistic, here are my top tips for getting the realism that you want. Have a look at your favourite parks and see how they do it. And if you don't know how to start, copy them and then make it your own. And if you like the layout of the park, just imitate that. The rest will follow. Small terrain changes create depth to sight lines. Now no park is ever truly flat, so never build on flat land. And when you do, move your terrain around a little. It doesn't have to be mountains, it just has to be enough to be noticeable. Using the small brush with a low intensity will do the trick. And modify your terrain around your coasters and your rides, and vary your height throughout the park. Nature will also struggle around the tracks close to the ground, so make sure you wear it down where the grass wouldn't grow. The right areas will also overgrow because maintenance can't get to them to keep them tidy. Get down to your guests level and see what they see. Think about what excites you when you're looking at rides or areas. Keeping sight lines clear can achieve an unobstructed view to a ride, but hiding it behind scenery can create intrigue. If you're creating an indoor attraction, you only need to concentrate on what your guests can see, not what you can see as a player looking down. It's okay to hide a flat roof warehouse behind a slightly taller facade. For example, you don't have to build an entire haunted mansion if the guests would never see behind the front of it. Just build the front and hide the warehouse behind it. And if you can't hide a maintenance area, then distract the guest with something else like a shop or hide things behind a fence that's taller than the guest. Have a park-wide theme and stick to it, even if you plan to theme different areas. Now this may be the types of vegetation that you use throughout the park, or it may be hints of pirate, gothic, sci-fi, it may even be a certain design of building, or something else. Every real life park has a theme that runs throughout everything they do, even the generic ones. You may see these hints in the fences that they use, the building materials, the types of plants, or the layout of areas. The inspiration can come from anywhere, but it will be there. Consider that your attractions will need maintenance, and this maintenance happens in fenced off or whole backstage areas. Leave space for these when you're building roller coasters. You'll typically find them on the final brake run or just before the lift hills. But we're creative though. They don't have to be closed in, they don't have to be massive, they just have to be there. And if you can hide them, do it. But don't be afraid to have them on show if you can't. Many parks don't hide their maintenance sheds well. And other maintenance is usually completed in huge warehouses set back from the park and have private roads feeding them. So consider building those and also consider building an administration building for your other departments too. Your park would also have staff that work in marketing, HR, finance, IT and so on. So make sure that you build these somewhere too. Think about the materials you use throughout the park. Use concrete pads to create maintenance areas. The bare concrete walls are good for tunnels and walls that your guests wouldn't see. And tarmac train works great for roads that your guests wouldn't use. Do some research into the real life attractions that you want. So for example, what angle is the lift hill? How tall are they? What speeds do they reach? How are the inversions and corners shaped? How fast do they take inversions and transitions? How steep are the drops? How long are they? How do they use heartline rolls? Researching how your coasters are put together and how they're going to sit on your landscape will give you a boost to the realism that you want. Consider how you'll keep your guests safe from the attractions that you're operating. Fence off coaster areas that are close to the ground or entire coaster areas if this gets messy. And vary the fence heights based on your ride. Consider don't die fencing if it's fast, spinny or a coaster, but smaller fences will do for tamer rides. Look at real parks for inspiration because you'll be surprised at what's okay. You can also use natural barriers like hedges, plants, rocks and cliffs to separate your guests from your rides. It isn't all about groundbreaking expensive roller coasters year in year out. Consider your park's budget and understand that your park will have added small and average attractions along the way. They may have cut corners and added a boomerang to bolster their coaster count. Your park should also have a balance of attractions for the market that you target. Don't forget the all age coasters, the tamer rides, the water rides. Not everything has to be a record breaker. Have no more than one headline attraction and the rest should fall underneath this as supporting attractions. A park will rarely have blank space. There will be something encouraging you to spend money wherever you look. Whether this is a game stall, a vending machine, a poster promoting something or an entire complex of shops. Take a note of where you see these in real life parks. Replicate that in yours. No area in your park should have dead spots. Your park needs a backstory. 
think about how your park got to where it is today. What attractions did they have in the past? What areas did they have? What was their budget? And so on. Once you have these in your head, live your history. Go and play out your park as if it would have been from day one. Build old rides, re-theme areas, expand your park as if it would have been from day one, and build your buildings like they would be in real life. Start with your foundations, build them up, and then fit it out from the inside. This will give you a park an authenticity that no planning can achieve. And lastly, it's absolutely fine to hate what you're building. And if you do, finish it before deleting it. If you don't finish it, you won't get closure on what you hate and you'll pollute your next attempt at building it. And until you get rid of these ideas, you can't refine it into what you want it to be. But also know that nothing is perfect. So before you do delete it, consider whether good is good enough. You may also want to make it part of your backstory. Finish it knowing you're going to retheme it later on. No park is free to perfection and they all have flaws. Paths may be too narrow, buildings may be badly designed, road coasters may be hated by guests. This is all part of the realism. Not even your favourite park gets it right every single time. Work with this, it's authentic. And those are the top tips that I use when creating realistic parks. And if you like what you see, then check out the other park project videos on this channel. And please consider subscribing. And thanks for watching. Happy building. I'll see you soon.